To get a better understanding of Windows architecture, we are going to cover a bit of operating system history. I know it sounds boring, but it's very important for future modules. In the early days of computers, everything ran together. Programs and the system itself shared the same space and had full access to the hardware. There were no limits on what a program could do, which meant one bad or buggy program could crash the whole system. Over time, operating systems started to separate programs from the core system, creating two levels, one for regular programs, user mode, and one for the system core, kernel mode. This change led to the creation of the kernel, the part of the system that had full control and keeps everything running smoothly and securely. But what is the kernel? The kernel is the core component of an operating system. It manages hardware resources such as memory, CPU, and devices, and handles critical tasks like process management, file system, and hardware communication. As mentioned earlier, giving application direct access to hardware resources posed a significant security risk. To address this issue, Intel introduced privileged levels, or what's known as RING, with the 8286 microprocessor but it was the 8386 processor that fully implemented the four rings model. This rings define different privileged levels. For example, ring 0 is the highest privileged level where the kernel operates, and then ring 3 is the lowest privileged level where user mode application runs, like browser, MS Word, and all of the applications. Ring 1 and 2 rarely used in modern operating system, but we will explain them later. This separation ensures that user mode applications cannot directly access or modify the kernel memory or hardware resources, improving security and stability. But let's suppose you write a C program that access or create a file on the disk. Accessing the disk is a hardware operation, which requires kernel mode privileges. However, your program runs in user mode, ring 3 and cannot directly interact with the hardware. To bridge this gap, the operating system provides a controlled mechanism for transitioning from user mode to kernel mode, which is system calls or syscalls. A system call is a well-defined interface that allows user mode applications to request privileged operations from the kernel. For example, when a program wants to create a file, it begins by calling a high-level function, which is create file w provided by the Windows API in kernel 32.dll. Don't worry, we will explain all of this later. This function serves as an interface for developers, but does not perform the operation of the file creation itself. Instead, it forwards the request to a lower level function, ntcreateFile, located in the ntdll.dll, which is part of the native API a layer that is close to the kernel. The ntcreate file function prepares the system call by loading a specific syscall number into the AIX register. For instance, hex 55, which is the SSN, the system service number for ntcreate file on the kernel. However, this number varies across Windows versions. The ntcreate file also prepares the necessary parameters such as the file name or access permissions on registers or on the stack. Then it executes the syscall instruction to initiate the transition to the kernel mode. This syscall instruction prompts the CPU to switch from user mode where applications run with restricted privileges to kernel mode where the kernel has full system access. In kernel mode, a system call dispatcher, key system call 64 on 64-bit 64 windows, takes control. It retrieves the syscall number, SSN, from the AIX register and consoles the system service descriptor table, SSDT, to locate the corresponding kernel function. The kernel mode integrate file function then executes the file creation operation. It verifies permissions, interacts with the file system, and ensures the operations adheres to the system security protocols, and then returns the result to the application. All system calls returns an int status value, a 32-bit code indicating the outcome of the operation. A value of status success means that the operation completed successfully, while other values indicate specific errors such as access denied or invalid parameters. The CPU then transitions back to user mode, allowing the application to resume execution with the operation's outcome. This structured process ensures that user mode application can securely request privileged kernel operations while maintaining system stability and security.
This is a high-level overview of how the transition from user to kernel mode happens. Now, let's take a look into a practical example. So, let's open notepad.exe and create a file that contains hello world. As you can see, the file is successfully created in the desktop. Now, we want to analyze the steps of the file creation process. And to do so, we're going to use x64dbg, which is an excellent Windows debugger that we're going to use often in this course. Just go to x64dbg.com, download it, and after the installation is complete, open x64dbg, open notepad.exe, write hello world, and click save to choose the location. But don't click the save button yet. Then go to file and attach, and then attach notepad.exe process to windbg. Once attached, x64dbg will pause notepad execution, so you have to press F9 to continue running notepad. Now, we want to set a breakpoints at the API function involved in the file creation and writing. A breakpoint is basically the instruction where we want the execution to be paused. Those functions are create file w, used to create or open a file, and write file, used to write data to a file. So set up breakpoints on create file w. We go to symbols tab, search for kernel 32.create file w. Right click on create file w and select breakpoint toggle up breakpoint. We do the same thing with the write file function. And if we go to the breakpoints tab, we will see all the breakpoints we have set. Let's get back to Notepad and try to save the file to the desktop. When we click the Save button, we see that the first breakpoint is reached, which is the Create File W Windows API function. If we take a look at the MSDN documentation of the Create File W, we can notice that the Create File W function has seven parameters. And on the x64 architecture, those parameters are passed in registers according to the Fast Call Calling Convention, also known as Microsoft x64 Calling Convention. Don't worry, we will cover calling conventions in future videos. On the x64 Microsoft Calling Convention, the first four integer parameters are passed in registers, and any additional parameters are passed on the stack. For create file w, which has seven parameters, the first four parameters are passed to rcx, rdx, r8, and r9, and the remaining ones go on the stack, starting from rsp plus uh, hex28. For example, those are the seven parameters. We have the LP file name, which is the path we see here, and the DW desired access. Then we have DW shared mode, then LP security attribute, which is null, and those are four parameters. Now, we need to go to the stack to find the three remaining parameters, and we have to go to RSP plus hex uh, 28, as we see in the picture. So, RSP register contains this value, and we need to add hex28 to it, and we will find the fifth parameter value. So after seeing all of those values, we hit F9 to move to the next breakpoint, which is write file, and we go to the MSDN documentation of the write file function, we will find that it expects five parameters, and we basically see the same thing. So the first four parameters are going to be in registers, and the fifth parameter, which is the last one, will be in RSP plus hex 28. Now let's step into this function to see what it's doing. Then we can see that this function is forwarding to the NT create file from NT DLL. Let's step over and we will see the NT write file. Now, when we step into the NT write file, we will see the syscall stop, which is the job of the native Windows API function, basically preparing the syscall stop. As you can see, we have moved the RCX value to R10. In x64 architecture, we first take the first parameter of the write file W, which is saved in the RCX register, and then move it to the R10. Then the AIX register is used to save the syscall number, the SSN of the write file. And then as we explained in the old diagram, the key system call 64 grabs the syscall ID from the AIX register and look for the syscall in the SSDT, which is the system service descriptor table. Once it finds it, it gets executed and return back the response. This is a high overview of how the file gets created, but in the next chapters, we will focus on getting deep into this architecture because it's very important for malware development.